<laughs> All right, look at that recording. Let's go. All right. Awesome. Wagwan, everyone. This is Wagwan. Ethan, Dimitri, Benny, and Axel Nader. Oh. All right. So you know, I, I'll kick things off. This is my first bullet point. Holland okay. scores another brace over the weekend. This yeah, is, he's a machine. This takes his goal yeah, tally for Dortmund. 67 games. He has 68 goals. He, he has more goals than games now. That's how yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And it's over like two seasons too. This isn't like a 10 game span. This is two two seasons. I saw I saw a stat that per like goal per minute ratio was better than Ronaldo's best ever like two seasons. He has a better goal to game ratio and he's only 21. Well yeah, he's got 68 goals in 67 games. It's better than anyone's ratio ever. Not only does he have the goals to game ratio for Dortmund, but for Norway this year as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. He got 30 yeah. goals in 12 or something. something yeah. played, he's played, I think he's played 12 games or 15 games, and he's only 12 goals away from being Norway's top goal scorer. <laughs> and let's keep in mind, he's a year older than us. It's like absurd. That's so stupid. Hey, <laughs> that's crazy. He's three older than me, three years older. Oh, right, three yeah, years older. That's true. I still got time. I still got time. I got time. No, and it, it doesn't even that doesn't even count for like the assists because he also gets like a D, he's probably got like 10, 15 assists if not more for Dortmund. I got you. No, he's twenty eight. You know? Oh, twenty eight. Right. He has twenty eight. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. See. Yeah. So. Like, so ninety six goal contributions in sixty eight games. Yeah. No, that's he's their whole team. Without him, Dortmund. Yeah. Oh, no. Jude, and Julie Bellium and Jude Bellium. Yeah, Jude Bellingham. No, no, Dortmund still have like a really good team, like overall. But they're not. Yeah, I don't know. No, it, they're nowhere near without Holland. I know this is still staying on the topic of Dortmund, but um, how good do we think Royce would have been if he wasn't injury prone? Oh I man, I think he yeah. would have been considered one of the best at, at during his era. He would have been considered one of the best really? attacking midfielders. I think so. I don't know. When I was when I was in eighth That's grade, bold. I mimicked my hairstyle after Royce. Like I thought he was the best <laughs> player ever. And then and then he always got hurt and it just went away. Man, he it was so yeah. sad. Yeah, he could have been really good. That is true. Even right now, even when he plays, he's on. He always scores against Bayern somehow. That is true. I don't, I don't know how. Yeah, dude, that's the thing. He was always very good. That's the same thing with um, R nine. Like, imagine how good his career would have been if he wasn't injury prone. Like, yeah. He's still he's still considered. People still consider him the greatest striker to ever play. Mm-hmm. It's kind of yeah, crazy. He didn't. He doesn't have like an insane amount of Champions League goals or anything like that, but he's still regarded as like you know one of the greatest, greatest like attacking threats in terms of pure talent. I think I read yeah. something that his he's he dribbled the keeper fifty times in his career, which is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> that's funny. yeah, that's funny. <clears throat> Bro, he's toying with that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's a nutty nutty stat line. Okay. Oh God, that guy. Do we yeah. think Lewandowski wins Ballon d'Or this year and last year? Yes. 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 He scored this year. He has scored in 19 straight games for Bayern Munich. That is outrageous. Yeah. No. He 19 still... consecutive games he scored. Whenever I look on Footmob and I see like if Lavan only scored one goal in the game, I'm like, oh, that's kind of a poor performance. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if Levon only scored one, I'm like, oh, he's slacking. <laughs> you know? That's Dude, I don't know. I also, I also saw a stat, though, because people like want Messi to win Ballon d'Or. But yeah. when Chile, the two to two years, they won um, uh, the Copa America, Vargas was top goal scorer, and no one, no one shouted him for a uh, Ballon d'Or. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but what has Messi know. outside a, of – Outside of Copa America, what has Messi done? Nothing. Well, he's done something, but like I'm pretty well, sure Messi is still top three in goals and assists contributions yeah. in Europe. I'm yeah, pretty exactly. sure he won. No, who won Golden Boot? It was Lewan in 2020. Messi was probably second. In in terms of goals and assists, Messi, I think Levon still wins, but Messi comes close. But yeah. the argument for Messi is that he like he literally carried Argentina. Like I don't think Vargas carried Chile. Like he might have been their top goal scorer, but he definitely didn't like carry them. No, I know. Messi straight I, I up carried Argentina to a win. I understand that. I understand that. But also, um, I think if it was twenty twenty, I'm more inclined to say Lewan. But this year, I'd say Messi. Dude, yeah, I, I, I think it's Levan, close. 
Love I, he got robbed. Well. He got robbed in 2020. I think I, I think heard 50 50, but I think it's I think it's gonna go to Messi. I heard but. this year, this Ballon d'Or ceremony, they're celebrating this year's and last year's winners. Well, so. if they do that, then Lewan should get first and then second. Yeah, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been. He's yeah, been it should the, be messy. Love on one and two, no matter what, for sure. No, I. He's like fine wine. The older he gets, the better he gets. Mm-hmm. Levan has to win last if, year, though. So. If yeah, for sure. If, if Holland bring Dortmund to um, a title or Champions League, does he win Ballon d'Or this year, or for twenty twenty two? Oh yeah, I think so. Um, I think. Yeah, I think if Dorman wins, because, win because he's going, he's going. Yeah, if Dorman win the league, because I think Dorman, if they win the league, he's in contention because he's been an unbelievable. Well, Bayern's also won the league nine years in a row, so to break the streak and then get mm-hmm. so many goals and assists. Oh, I really wouldn't want to see Holland at Bayern. I really wouldn't. Want no, to dude, see I, I really hope he doesn't leave. I really oh, hope. Man. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid he's going to go to like Bayern, but I want him to come to the Prem. I yeah, think he's probably going to leave. I just don't want him to go to Bayern. I think he's going to go to Madrid. It sucks to see Dortmund players just, you know, go into – as soon as they get good, they just leave and go to Bayern, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> Dortmund's – if Dortmund had a core 11 still, uh, that could have been one good team. That team would mm-hmm. be disgusting, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bro, if Fiorentino Perez signs Mbappe, Holland, and the Lick next, next year, they're going to they're gonna have a statue of him. It sounds pretty – it sounds pretty likely. I think I think, I think Mbappe is leaving up. Because uh, he wants to play for Madrid, that's his dream club. Well, his contract yeah. expires next summer, right? Yeah. So I think he's leaving at the end. Of, I think that's guaranteed. Yeah. Here's what I don't get. How, how about Florentino Perez saying that they need the Super League to survive as a club, but they'll drop 180 mil on Mbappe? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's so stupid. <laughs> Bro, I I also I don't understand how FIFA FIFA get these polls. I see these polls all the time that I say, oh. The majority of soccer players want to see the Super League. Like, what no. polls are they taking? No one wants to see the Super League. Mm-hmm. I think the Super League would work for one year, and then I think everyone would be like, "Wow, I missed the Champions League." The best right, thing I about think... the best thing about the Super League would be seeing Arsenal in it. Not gonna lie, that would be the best <laughs> part. I'm sorry, Benny, but that would be that would be the most. Interesting they probably part. they they don't deserve to make the, the Super League. No, they got a lot of money. Brighton deserves it's just based it. on the club size. Yeah. That's that's a good good change. Brighton, dude, fourth after five games, they played four shit like three shit teams or four shit teams first four games, but then they beat Leicester two one. Okay, but who was watching the game? I, I did. It was a robbery, a hundred percent a robbery. Okay, true, but but in the Premier League, it, like Leicester won in twenty sixteen or twenty fifteen to twenty sixteen. Right. That, right. And they just had a good momentum and a good streak. If as long as you get that good streak, you could just keep on winning. But do we think Leicester is finishing or Brighton? I think Brighton can honestly finish top ten this year. Top ten, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I think ten. Right. I don't think they're finishing anything higher. Yeah, than that's that. possible. I don't see them getting relegated. No, no, <laughs> no. I I'm thinking be, like twelfth. Yeah. I think after- it's a lucky streak. The past four or five years, after five games, it's been like 16th, 14th, 16th, and 16th. Now I think pulled. if they keep this good run and then they come up against like a Liverpool or like an Arsenal even, then if they tie or get uh, some sort of win or lose by one, I would still feel good if I'm Brighton. Right. Oh, yeah. Because honestly, Leicester, Leicester have looked a lot uh, like lackluster this year. Like their team is not as good as it was last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really. I don't know. They just. They're not playing as well. I don't know if it's just Vardy running out of gas or what's going on. But, but the, that's the thing. Like they made. They signed Vestergaard, so they yeah. they made acquisitions to the team. As the team hasn't changed much. If anything, they improved their team. I, I think it's the Daka, tools but he's around like Vardy. Minutes. What was that, Benny? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say I think it's the tools around Vardy. Like his wingers. I don't really. I don't really fancy Harvey Barnes that much. I mean, I mean I then they have I Albright and who never plays, but they have Harvey Barnes and Albright, and they haven't changed their wingers since like 2017. And they have Vardy top score every year, so they can't really blame him. Right. Um, I mean, actually, I, you were watching that game, right? Didn't Harvey Barnes yeah. block the keeper twice for the both offside goals? Yeah, Benny, you watch, right? Oops, sorry. So, <laughs> so do you think that I think it's harsh from VR to disallow it twice? Because he did not 
I don't really think he obstructed the keeper, the second goal. Maybe the first goal, but not the second goal. I mean, I think that just I think it's stupid to VAR like the, an offsides like that. I, I don't think. Yeah, it was. I it's think not that's, offsides. that's part of the offsides rule. Like if a player is obstructing the goalie, I find that stupid. I think touch should influence offsides. Yeah, because he wasn't blocking him the second goal, but they counted it offsides because they thought it obstructed him. Which, that like, also, how can you say that? How can you say, oh, I think from this camera angle? Yeah, yeah, and that's twice as well, which I don't know. But that could also bring up a point. Do you think VR is corrupt? Because look at Ronaldo. Sure. Look I at agree. Ronaldo. Dude, Although, I Ronaldo, don't know. I, I was absolutely what, what I look at Man United, and I was pissed off that he didn't get a penalty. He should have gotten oh. two penalties. The first one, yeah. the first one against Zuma. Okay, I could see. Yeah, because that was like, a dive. Like he 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 looked for the contact, but the well, it wasn't one, a dive. But the second one, dude, he got no ball whatsoever. Dude, but here's the thing. Even, like, on other teams, like, other teams dive and they go down before the tackle and they get called a penalty. It's just consistency. No one's consistent with the pen. Right. No. Right. If if you're going to call, please be consistent throughout the whole season and through every team. That's why it's right. so corrupt. But if that's any other player, if that's, I don't know, Greenwood or Lingard or Bruno, it's they're going to look at VAR and call a penalty, I feel like. But the fact but that they didn't look at VAR for the second one. I didn't even see them go to it. Bro, they didn't even go to VAR, and that was, I thought that was a clear penalty. Nah, yeah, dude, I thought it was. Contact, I'm sorry. Contact is a foul, I have to say. Bro, Zuma did not get the ball whatsoever. And, uh, dude, I saw Ronaldo was fuming. Dude, I think – if if they drop if United drop points that game it would have oh, been like, they would have oh yeah saved, David De Gea his last Snow penalty save was in 2014. Guys, infamously known for De not saving penalties. Subbed on De Gea a minute before the game started. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. How how stupid is David Moyes though? You're subbing on Mark Noble, who's what in his late 30s. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah. He's cold. He's cold. Well, and he's taking... who, who gets subbed on and takes a good pen? Oh, okay. no, yeah. I think, I think that's the strategy. Same... We, we saw it in the Euros. The strategy yeah, to right. like sub on players to specifically take pens is a bad strategy. You don't. You need a players who are accustomed like to the flow of the game, to the pressure. If you sub on a player, there's going to be even more pressure to take that pen. And right. He's exactly. Be more likely to miss. Exactly. Either. Because those those types of players that have played the whole 90 minutes are already acclimated to the game. Like they know exactly. how, how the, the game's been running. Speaking yeah. of West Ham, I think a perfect player from West Ham that would just make Man United complete is Declan Rice. Oh yeah, that's mm. that's, that's literally he's, United. He is one of the that's best. Good I think he's one of the best players in the Prem. I think, I think he, he's, one of, he's one of the best CDMs. for think, sure. He is so calm agree, on the ball. Like, mm. I don't trust McTominay or, or Fred back there. No, I That's like I like Mick Sauce. I like I like Mick Sauce. I'm a big fan of Mick Sauce. I like Mick Sauce. Fred, Fred, he rips one Fred one very, one in. Yeah, Mick Sauce will rip yeah. it from here. And there, He's got but. a strike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I think Bro. I think Mick Sauce is pretty calm with the ball, but I yeah, think, we definitely need a better option than Fred and Matic. Bro, I think yeah. I don't know why Ole isn't playing Donnie at uh right next to Mick Sauce. Literally, yeah, Donnie said he, he loves he loves playing that position. He'll play a six. He said he's played I've seen it Donnie play the CDM, and he's he's done a pretty decent job. But he just, I mean, there's he just gets no time. Like there's, I think, really no I think excuse. that's that's stupid from Ole as well because he could have let um, Donnie go to Everton on loan, and he would have gotten great playing time and probably made mm-hmm. himself into a better player. Donnie is one of the better players when he plays. Yeah. Right, dude. Even on his debut, he scored. He got subbed mm-hmm. on and scored. So it's I don't know why it was from the start. He got subbed on. There was th- two one. We're done two 0 against Palace. Subs on scores, gives us hope, and then Ole benches him the next game. I don't think he even came off the bench. But that's the thing. It's got to be personal. Uh, dude, but that's but the how? thing. He, he's no, fine. Yeah. Like, you know? Ole, <laughs> Donnie, like, Donnie was about to personal? leave. Donnie was about to leave, and Ole says, like, he's a, he's a part yeah, of my plan. He's important, and he says he's important, and then he doesn't play the rest of it. Like, he still doesn't Yeah, play. Ole's just capping. Like, he's just lying. Like, yeah, no, not- but Dimitri, we both know Ole what? is at the wheel. Like, if you're playing Montage <laughs> and Fred over Donnie Van de Beek, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I, don't, I, Donnie, I trust I would, Ole. I would, I would go if I was Donnie. I'd go up to Ole. I'd be like, look, I have like you're my manager. I trust in you, but if if I don't see a change by winter, I want out. You know. I well, that's kind of the same thing with Foden, though. Pep trusted Foden, and Foden's like, yeah, I respect it. And then he didn't play for like two years, and then he finally gets to play now. Yeah, but Foden was like 16 and 17, you know, in a city squad that has insane depth. Donnie right. is 23, 24. And, uh, and United's and he's all, position he's, is CDM. He's already and, a proven player you know, as well. 
Yeah. I don't know. I think you just have to trust uh, Ole on this one. I mean, like, I this is the one year where I would give Ole as much uh, trust as he needs. Bro, I don't trust Ole with anything. How the hell are you going to have that United team and lose to young boys? <laughs> okay, but they also got a red card. Yeah. That's it like saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The it does. It does. You, relax, no, no. relax, relax, relax. How are you going to say a Chelsea team last year who won the Champions League loses 5 to 2 to West Brom? <laughs> okay. I'm whatever. a Chelsea fan, but I'm just saying. Dude, yeah, this is like, the, okay, West West Brom and Young Boys. I mean, yeah, 5-2, one red card to one, you know? Like Yeah. Dude, and the yes. red card was in the 30th minute, so with, with 60 that, minutes. Dude, with that United team, you guys should not be losing. With your back four. No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be losing. But, like, look, we're still, we're still like, trying to figure out as a team, trying to mesh. Ole still doesn't know how to play everyone and rotate. Like, there's still put, a lot of growing pains here. So, of course, we're going to, like, there's going to be, like, you know, shit, shit happens. Like, that's it. You yeah. put you put any other well-known manager in Ole's position during that game, they do not lose that game. I guarantee it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Also, it was Lingard that just made a bad pass at the yeah, end. Yeah, you know, it should be a game. tie. Like, how are you? You can't blame Ole for that, you know? Dude, the substitutions he made during the game made no sense. I don't know. With that, I dude, with I that team, with that team, you should not be going ultra defensive against young boys. You yeah, but Ronaldo, dude, they have Ronaldo, a red card. Ronaldo can't break their defenses easily. Greenwood breaking their defenses easily. It's bad coaching. Right. He got scared. Right. He gets scared, dude. He gets a red card. He's like, okay, we have to. We, Okay, we have to play all, defense now. Right, and then you guys get countered or you get pressure all the time. No, no attacking threat, and then what do you expect? You get scored on. That's a game's over. Well, it was a ninety-six minute winner. It was a bad pass by Lingard. Well, well I mean, I think it fact, was fine throughout the whole game. You guys were getting dominated after the well, red card. Yeah, because they had a red card. Right, Any team with eleven people is better than a team with ten people. I disagree. I don't. And a ten, a ten a ten man United is better than eleven man Young Boys, but on paper, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't even think so. I don't think so. No, dude. Dude, that one dude, it's like, a professional these, team. These all, yeah, these are all professionals. Like you know. Yeah, but there's like it again, makes a huge difference. Again, you, you could you can do this with any anything, dude. Like even in basketball, you think Alex Caruso compares to LeBron James? What? I mean, they're still professional. Like I, right, yeah, yeah. right. I mean, they're they're still still professionals. Yeah, they're professionals, but there's levels. When you get Wait, to that Ethan, level, sorry, what did yeah, you say? What you, Ethan, what did you say? You said a, a Man United with ten men is better than an eleven with young boys. Yeah, I agree. I think I a, agree. A I ten agree. man United should be beating an eleven man young. They boys. should be, but when you have a, a scared coach, you can't. Yeah. yeah. No. I, oh, can I we talk it, about how much better like Man United? Like I, I'm like kind of scared of them now because Ronaldo's there. Yeah. Ronaldo is playing pretty well right now. Uh, dude, something has to change with Sancho, dude. He's on my fantasy team. He needs to be doing something. This is outrageous. I drafted uh, okay. him early, too. Yeah, the issue, the issue with Sancho is that we have a lot of good attacking mids, and Pogba is only going to play attacking mid. I think playing Pogba at CDM is, is just not it. Yeah, so Pogba's Pogba is Pogba like... left attacking mid. You can't bench Greenwood. Greenwood's playing <laughs> the best of his career right now. But You're even... obviously not going to bench Bruno. Even, so... the game, he, even the game Pogba played CDM, he got two assists. Yeah, but this is the best Pogba's yeah, he, played like since yeah. his prime. Well, yeah, he's a, he already has more. He has more assists than he had the in the last, last two, two years seasons combined. Yeah. Right. Last two seasons combined in the prem, he's got six assists. This season, he's got seven. Yeah, that's outrageous. Yeah, he's yeah, thirteen just, away from breaking the Premier League record for assists or tying the Premier League record for assists. Yeah, and it's five games in. <laughs> yeah. So like. But still, he's just he's way better when he's in that like floating attacking mid role where he has the freedom to roam. When he gets tied in the back and he starts trying to dribble out and do all these, you know, drop of the shoulder in the back and just you know, it just, wait, who? It's not it. Pogba. Hmm. Pogba. But, I think Pogba is oh, one of the wait. best center mids in the world. Yeah, at, at his, his best. At, his, at yeah, his best. On his day, on his day, he is. Yeah, hundred percent. Dude, even like like he like even back then when people were like. Like, when he had, like, a bad spell last year, he didn't really try, didn't really play much. I know people thought that he wasn't, like, into it, but even when he wasn't into it, no one could win the ball from him. He's so strong with the ball. He's so good when he wants to be good. It's, it's like, scary. That's the thing. He's, he's one of those players where, like, you look at the game, and he doesn't have to assist or score or do much, but you could just tell by the way he moves. Like, that he's, he's, he's he gifted affects that the soccer. game. Right. Yeah. He has a yeah. presence when he plays. Yeah, 100%. Okay, well, ra- uh, quite a change in subject. How about okay. Messi getting subbed off 
Dude, you, this is crazy. I almost just said that. I literally almost just said that. That's really? <laughs> Messi, Messi gets subbed off, and after he gets subbed off, PSG end up winning the game. But Messi, Messi, after he gets subbed off, doesn't even shake Puch's hand. Really? So like, what do we think about that? Dude, I I, I think three games, three games he's had under PSG so far, zero goals, zero assists. Yeah, but he hasn't started all of them, so I give him like only two games. Yeah, but still, I don't, has he played poorly though? Like, well, I mean, he hit the crossbar in one of them. That's pretty much all he did that game. I but I also, Club Rug. I just I just don't think that PSG team, like those players, I don't think they work well together. They don't know how to play with Messi. I like, saw I, I saw a video. Of Messi had the ball. He picked it up. I think a little past halfway, and. I think five or six players of PSG just stood there. Yep. They weren't making any runs. Like, if you think about Barcelona, like ever since Messi was 17, like, he's had fullbacks flying past right. him. He's had two wingers even higher. He's had six guys to pick from when he's running with speed and when Messi's running a pace at you, that's the scariest thing in the world when he has other options. Right. With PSG, he has two with four defenders. I, I don't think that team's going to do well. Because there's three superstars on that team. I don't think they work well together. That's my roommate. <laughs> yeah, no. The, yeah, it's going to be tough because Messi's, Messi's used to having a team which is like really the purpose and the entire tactic is Messi, you know? And, and now now it's a completely different situation. I feel like he's like not, even, he shouldn't be playing the midfield right now. I feel like he's playing too deep. I feel like he's got to be a, an attacker again. He should probably be... Put right back on right wing. That's, that's uh, what I was thinking. Because I think too. he was played what, like center attacking mid last game. Yeah, he yep, was. He's, and then and then I find that he floats too deep, and then he kind of just walks around for like twenty minutes at a time, and then he doesn't well, do that's, anything. That's how Messi plays. He he walks and he like surveys the field and then attacks. Yeah, at, at at Barcelona he walked for ninety percent of the game, and ten percent of the game was when he started running or actually did something. And he ended up being the most influential player on the game with only walking ten percent of the or running ten percent of the time, which is kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have shaken Pochettino's hand either. I'm messy, man. You, I went from <laughs> Barcelona to you guys. I don't know why you're subbing me off. Wait, what time but did he get subbed out at? Seventy like seven or something. But that's the thing, dude. On paper. In the past two, three years, that Barcelona team, this PSG team on paper is better than that Barca team. That Messi's been a part yeah. of for the past three or four years. 100%. And the, the but, missing part is definitely Xavi and Iniesta. Those two were like the, the glue to Barcelona. Yeah, but even even without them, Messi was still able to perform at, you know, Messi yeah. levels. He was still able to get 35 cold contribution seasons in La Liga and take Barca to the Champions League. Even if you don't know, lose to Liverpool, or whatnot, still, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I completely agree. I just, dude, I'm not sure. I'm not. I, I honestly don't know what's going on. I don't think PSG are favorites for Champions League. I mean, I'd, no, I after mean, playing it's only Club been Rugg, one no. week, but yeah, dude, at the moment, probably not. The way I I saw that Club Rouge game and the way they played against Club Rouge was god awful. Yeah, but horrible. Club Rugg also played really good. You can't take their yeah, you but can't dude, discredit them. PSG versus Club Bruges. Like, it just PSG like should be no attack. PSG should be winning that game easily, three four zero, without even questioning. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, just because of the names of the team, though, like what they've done and everything, right? How much money they have, right? Well, so, so who do you think are favorites? Chelsea again? Uh, um, Chelsea or Bayern? I think right now, I'd actually, I still give it to Chelsea because the way Chelsea are playing right now is. I, I it's saw just like really Gary, really high level. Gary Neville and Jerry um, Jamie Carragher both said this is Chelsea's title to lose, title race to lose. Because I think we've played, we've been playing the best out of all the teams. Liverpool have yeah. the same same like they have the same results as us, but they have not played the bat, as good of a teams as we have. Well, there's United, another team who has the same, same results as us. Has the same amount of points. Just yeah, United does too. Yeah. Don't, no, don't I, forget us. No, I know you guys. You guys are getting results. Yeah, but the like play style, like you could just tell, like, ju- like that's Chelsea Spurs game sol- solidified it for me that we are the best. I I could probably say we're the best team in the world, us and Bayern. 
Yeah. I, and I honestly, before the season started, I said <clears throat> I said Chelsea are going invincible this year. I don't know. I, I still think Chelsea aren't going to win. I don't think they'll go invincible. I don't mean. I, I, yeah, I, they I don't think they're. Go I don't think they're good enough. I know they've had a good beginning of the season, but I, it, no team can last that long. It's not. It, it's too hard nowadays. Yeah, but there's, facts. there's no team Chelsea That's go true. into that I think. Okay, we're gonna lose this game. Every yeah, single game well, we don't. Print. Well, Every single, I think United you're right that it's Chelsea's team. league to lose. I think you're right about that. Like, yeah, but that's oh, that's the same thing two years ago. Liverpool was undefeated, and then they went to Watford and what? Lost 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was that the best sure. ever. <laughs> a game that <laughs> nobody thought they would lose, and they that lost. Was like nine, 19, what was it, 19 wins in a row before they lost? At Anfield? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was so that's the thing. Field too, wasn't it? Dude, yeah. going invincible is so hard, I think, nowadays. Yeah, no, it is crazy. How about Rangers, Rangers just did it, right? Though. Didn't Rangers just do it? Yeah, but that's, yeah. That's I mean, different. That's so impressive. That's crazy. But, yeah, yeah. That's, that's I think that's the most impressive, impressive feat ever. Yeah, and that's actually, they did that's it with like very few draws, too. I think they only got, like, five draws or something, which is Benny, crazy. Ridiculous. Benny, that's the only thing you got writing for you right now, the invincible season. Arsenal added in 2001. That's all I can five. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Honestly, I, I, no. Arsenal ate two wins in a row, two clean sheets. Dude, he, both here's by the thing. They, 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 their, their offense is okay. Their defense is horrible. <laughs> they have Gabriel oh. Malagas. Dude, we, we signed William Saliba, who is the best young defender in France, like awarded that. And no, we don't play him. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing that's most baffled me. You guys signed him. He played not a single game. He went on loan to like back to like Saint Etienne. Played like fourteen games. Like scored a couple goals. Had like man of the match performances. Yep. And then loan him out again. You know, like it has. And then and, sell and him. Instead, they're playing yeah, like Rob Holding and you know all these guys. Like I don't understand why Saliba is not in the first team. You said you spend fifty mil. Like who spends fifty mil on Ben White? <laughs> like when when United yeah. signed Varon for forty, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, five, yeah. like these these high quality players and like the big name players, it seems go for way less than like younger players. If it seems, it's yeah. dude, it's it's the Premier League tax because it's they're already English proven. Tax. It's the English tax. They're already proven in the Prem. That's why they're they're price skyrocket. That's yeah, why Chelsea. Declan, Declan Chelsea's gonna go most... for like if he's sold, he's gonna go for like eighty ninety. Lingard would go for like sixty. You know, right. But that's the thing. Chelsea's most expensive player that we bought um, before Tuchel came in was Ben Chilwell. Or uh, Havertz, yeah. but Ben Chilwell was $55 million before we signed Havertz. We got Werner for cheaper. Um, yeah, Mendy was Werner cheaper. was like, what, 30 goals in the Bundesliga? Oh, Mendy right. was probably the best signing we've probably made in the past three years. Yeah, that's true. Mendy out of nowhere. Thomas Tuchel now has more clean sheets than goals conceded for Chelsea. Yeah, that's pretty wow. insane. That's that's a very yeah. You attribute a lot of that to Mendy. I think that the defense, the defense just became think, more solidified, and then Mendy's. Uh, they play agreed. such good defense. It seems like they try like more on defense than offense. I don't oh even yeah. Know if it's like specifically their defense, though, I think it's no. just their entire system as a whole uh, is just like is really really well oiled machine. You know. I'm, I'm with Benny because look, think about this. Their last game, Chelsea defenders and midfielders are, score more than their attackers. They have about eight guys behind the ball at all times, Chelsea. Dude, that's a they good have, thing. They have Lukaku up front, and then they have Havertz kind of chilling. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing because Kovacic and um, um, Jorginho, who just recently started doing this past year, year and a half, um, it's what they used to do is they just play the ball, but they break through defense and then they go forward and then they have the other players make the runs around them. That's why the system works so well. Mm-hmm. Kovacic could have had so many assists if he plays the ball, but he never plays that that last pass. Yeah. If you watch if you watch Chelsea game. Definitely. I, I, I almost picked up Kovacic in fantasy because he's he's such a solid pick. He always plays good, I think. Kovacic mm-hmm. is actually, yeah, he's he's really molding into like a very, very, very good center man. Right. All right. I have I have the stats for Prem this season. So we have yeah. Rudiger, defender, he has one goal. Alonso, defender, has one goal. Kovacic, midfielder, has one goal. And then you have R- R- Lukaku, who has three, so it's tied right now. Havertz at one, so that's 4-3. Thiago Silva has one. Chalaba has yeah. one. 
Reese James yeah. has one, and Conte has one, and Pulisic wow, has yeah. one. So Pulisic I think, the yeah. Huh? Oh, I didn't even know. I thought he was injured from like. I didn't time. either, but no, he's, he, he scored. He scored against Palace, and then he got injured, and he's coming back too. Uh, so the defenders have zero. more goals than attackers right now. Yeah. Well, attackers think, is pretty much only what Lukaku and what Werner. Oh, well, Havertz, Mount. Yeah. Ziyech. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Same with assists. Reese James has two assists. Uh, Kovacic has three assists. Alonso has one assist. Yeah. Chelsea just have so much depth that they could just play. They could give so many people a break each week and just keep their mm -hmm. team fresh. Right. And <laughs> the, only, the, the only person they can't throw in is Saul. Yeah. yeah he true. started. He's, dude, he's not acclimated to the Yeah, we like yeah, yeah. Well, he he's, played one game and it was atrocious. He, yeah, against Villa. He played off. I'm not going to lie. I think Villa. that was oh, kind of necessary. I didn't even him. know he played once. Yeah, right. he started, but he got subbed off at half. It was, right. Because he was just. Yeah, that he bad. played kind of bad. Oh, he I don't know. I remember acclimated to English football. Right. Yeah, because it's exactly. so much faster. Yeah, oh my! Fair. In Spain, he had the ball for thirty seconds at a time. They were right. No one, no one would pressure you. You could do whatever the fuck you wanted to. But yeah. Like, oh man! I think I it was kind of necessary to sign him. I'm not gonna lie. I think we needed him because just in case. I don't know because he's I, one of those players. For just in case, sure. Just he's one of those players that I think he fits that like that Kovacic, Jorginho type player. Yeah, he does. But like you guys definitely like don't need him. You know. Yeah, he definitely well, shouldn't yeah. play over anybody unless they're injured. Yeah, exactly. He's just a good rotation player. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You, because personally, I don't like if like I don't I don't think Conte should play if Kovacic and Jorginho are together. I don't like that dynamic. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's the best midfield duo that Chelsea have. I think is Kovacic Jorginho together. That's yeah, and I feel like if they did a midfield three, like who would they put there? Do you think but, they who would they sit back and who would they put forward? But that's well, the thing. if you're gonna sit back anybody, it has to be Conte. Conte's second, the most defensive midfielder. Yeah. Second, out of them. second half against Spurs, we switched to three five two. Three five two is your like your guys is like formation, like that has your name written all over it. You know. Yeah. That's why you ben can Cho trademark Chelsea on it. That's why Chelsea Ben Chilwell so has a hard to score against because they're always so compact in the middle. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. And you, and then after, if you get a shot off, you have many in goal. It's like what yep. six six. <laughs> Yeah, man, I yeah. would really like to see Bayern Chelsea. I think that would be a really good game. Oh, be yeah, a great game. Also, That'd if Bayern and Chelsea game. play, I think Conte would be a better player over to like play him in a position over Kovacic or Jorginho. Wow. Because for a more attacking team, I think you need a Conte in the team rather than Kovacic and Jorginho. He is an engine, Conte's everywhere. Yeah, that's the thing. Conte, he doesn't have a solidified position, he's just all over. Like you can't really pinpoint him as like a CDM or center mid. He's just literally all over. That's true. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think Kimmich would start on Chelsea if he played? Uh no no. He doesn't fit their system. I don't think. Yeah. No, like, dude, he's such he's such an content. interesting player. He's like you know. That's the thing. Like I don't see him playing anywhere else but Bayern. No, Kimmich is still world class. Easily, I think he's one of the best CDMs in the world right now. Yeah, but like. He's like he just doesn't fit this Chelsea system right now, so he probably wouldn't play. But that doesn't mean like he's not good enough, you know. He's still like he's a, a, he's a special he player. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's he's it's crazy. He's considered one of the best midfielders and one of the best defenders in the world. Yeah, and he's like yeah. twenty four probably. Yeah, dude. The yeah. past two or three years, he really solidified himself as one of the the best in, uh, in this he's era. The, I want to see him leave yeah. Bayern eventually. I don't know. Like that's like, why I asked about Chelsea because I don't. Like, I don't where, see where him could he go? fit anywhere. He could go to United. We need a CDM. Kimmich would fix it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be actually a really good signing. If, if United got Kimmich, that would be insane. If United got Declan Rice, I swear they wouldn't lose a game. Imagine Declan Rice and Kimmich. At United, oh my God. Like, oh my United's God. defense is so solid that they need that that one guy sitting in front of that block. Yeah, that's true. And so do yeah, our CDM is easy, easily our weakest position. Yeah. yeah, easily, without a doubt. Yeah. How about uh, Juventus <laughs> in seventeenth oh place after four games? <laughs> um, it's tragic. I think yeah. the lick needs to go. That's the first, the worst start they've had in sixty six years. Oh, dude, don't, yeah. Delict, he made a huge mistake going from Ajax to there. That's, dude, no, that's I don't Ronaldo's think he made a mistake. Fault. That's Ronaldo's fault. He after he was, I think he was 
like literally confirmed with Barca. Him and De Jong were gonna go to Barca, mm-hmm. and then Ronaldo after that game was like, "Come to Juventus," and he went. Delict was one Juve of my favorite 18th. players. Oh, yeah, Juve eighteenth. So they're in relegation. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, they're eighteenth, not even seventeenth. So they yeah, tied two two to Udinese, one zero to Empoli. They lost one zero to Empoli, lost two one to Napoli, and then tied one one to Milan. AC but Milan. But that's the thing, yeah. dude. We're not, we're not like literally the whole. What happened? We're not on the left. That's it. And their team went to shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, it's only four games though. But yeah, it's a yeah. really bad start. But do you think they can blame Ronaldo, or do you think it's just a lack of of good? They, I think they're just defending. They're just missing that one player. Because with Ronaldo, he's such a clinical finisher that you put him inside of in, in front of the goal once. That's all you need. Because oh, sometimes sure. they'll have a scrappy one zero win, and then Ronaldo just scores because he's that clinical. I totally I mean, agree. Yeah. I don't think Juventus have that it player. I don't think they have that anymore. Like I know Chiesa is pretty good in, right. in and and he's he was pretty good for Italy in the Euros. But he's not but, a player that's gonna get by defenders and score goals. He just he's not he's not there yet. Chiesa's he's not there yet. Amazing right. player, but he, he still needs more time to right. develop. Right. He's not there. The best yeah. type of striker is like a Lukaku, a big stocky, big striker to have so this to hold up because I feel like teams with smaller strikers don't do as well anymore. Um, I think it depends on the team. It depends on the system yeah. as well. I mean, United was doing good without Ronaldo. They don't have a big striker. City did it with De Bruyne playing a false nine, you know? Like, it, it de- yeah, it, but you have to, like, completely change your system and tactics around it. Dude. You can't put that kind of, like, a De Bruyne and put him as, like, a number 10 and expect him to play well, you know? So You have to put him at that false nine. I mean, Jack- Inter... Oh, actually, go ahead. No, you can talk. I'm going off topic. I was going to say, Inter... I mean, Inter, all they have is Lautaro. That's their their main striker because Lukaku left, and they're still second place with 10 points after four games. So. Yeah, Lautaro is very good, though. And they it's, also have... team, it's also a team mindset and, like, what you want to do as a team. Like, if Juventus lost Ronaldo, that probably got to them, and they probably let it get to them, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's like losing – Barca losing uh, Messi. Yeah, Barca is not going to be the same for a long time. Mm-mm. Well, that, it's not as impactful because – Ronaldo was only there for two years. Bro, but. how long is Ansu Fati out for? Yeah, I thought he I was. Know. I thought he was already back, right? I thought he was supposed to be. Bro, he his first season or first month, he won La Liga Player of the Month, and he gets injured. Oh, he was. That's he's that's what Barca need. Barca needs someone like you, him. I mean, I didn't watch the Barca game this weekend, obviously, because I mean, I don't know. They it was, it was today. Oh, today, one one. And they tied one one. Yeah, I dude. saw. I don't know. Like, I saw the lineup and the substitutions. Coleman is like throwing on like these random 17, 18 year old academy kids like everywhere. I mean, but it worked. They tied one one. That's, not, I mean, that's dude, not working. That's not working. No, that's not working, dude. They barely, they barely scrapped. Hey, what are you talking minutes. about? Coleman's the future. He gave the club a future. <laughs> yeah. Because I saw they like have they got some eighteen year old Austrian kid on loan who was like who scored like nine goals in the Austrian Bundesliga. Oh my god! And then god. they started him. Like, you know, like what, like, and they, like, Luke De Jong is the weirdest signing on loan. Oh, like 31 no, that's old, the weirdest signing. Very, I've very ever mediocre yeah. striker. Dude, like, I thought that was a joke when I read it. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, this is Barcelona. Like, but that's, you know, oh. with, with Barca, I don't know what can fix them. Like, their, Money. their team, they're in their team is such in the shambles right now. Yeah, that I, I, I just, honestly, like there's not one. Corrupt. There's not I'll one tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. It's the, the thing that fixed them and that made them great in their first place is their academy. If they focus on their academy again, then they're going to do good things. Like all I, the honest, good players you think of, like Xavi yeah. and Yesta, Busquets, Messi, all them came from. Yeah, La but you Masia. have to grow them and develop them. Like the way yeah. they're doing it right now, like it's just all over the place. I like, think. It's I just, think like Pedri. You know? Pedri is a beast. He's homegrown. Oh, Pedri's amazing. Yeah, but like that's like one young midfielder, you know. And I'm sure they'll have many more to come. But like. Oh, I'm sure there are several for, for the next for this year and the next couple of years. Like Pedri isn't the answer, you know. I like, think he will be the answer, but not yet. They don't I have think, a good attack at all, or no good strikers. Defy I think the is, team, the team yeah. will, will come Defy together once Coleman leaves and when Xavi comes. When Xavi comes back as manager, I think that's when the team will play again. Because uh, at, that, that. at that point, it that. won't be the players; it'll be the style. Because yeah, but that's in, what people thought about Lampard. No, in, Lampard yeah. never had a specific style. Yeah, Javi. Javi was the only one um, under Pep Guardiola where, like, he could talk about tactics. Javi would like fully understand and like could replicate. He's yeah. in Qatar. He he won the league 
with like a crap like a a team that hasn't won before, and he took that team to play like Barca style. Yeah, but touch football. Is that I like if he he comes back, he can incorporate that back into Barca's academy and back into their players. I think they they win again. Yeah, but does he have the players to do it? That's like Mikel Arteta doing total football right now because he knows Pep Guardiola. <laughs> he, you can see him trying, but he just doesn't have the players. The if, if Arsenal and Barcelona played right now, I still think Barcelona are better. Oh well, I think the problem with Barcelona is they lost their identity. They lost the way they yeah. play football. They're a lot like right. they used to play tiki taka and pass the ball around, and and they they turned into a counter attacking team. Right. Like so I, I think if Pep Pep went to quite like like a lesser team, like if Pep went to like a West Brom or something. I, I don't think he'd be able to use the same tactics he used at that city. It'll, It'll be tough. tough. I agree. It's it's tough because Pep only managed like the top teams in the league. Yeah, yeah. but but West Brom's kind of like far. I'm saying like a lesser top team, like a Leeds or something, like an That's Everton the, or something. Like, yeah, it's, it's the players' mindset yeah. too. Like if, if you can have good players, but if they don't want to run and they're not willing to do the extra stuff, then you're not going to win and be successful. Yeah, you know? and dude, most of the times it's not even like the players' ability; it's the players' confidence. Like, look at yep. Ian Nacho last year. The tail end of the season, he was the second – he scored second most goals at the tail end of the season in the top five leagues just mm -hmm. because he got confident to start taking more riskier shots that ended up going in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's man. another big big thing you need to work on is confidence. Maybe not even the, the skill level because at that professional level, like, you're you're good enough. I think when when you're a pro, I mean, you have all the skills, you 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 have all the tools. But I think what separates the best players from the good players are, is confidence. That's you're exactly right. I mean, yeah, football is an entire is a huge emotional game. It's it's psychological. The mental and, side and, and of it is Javi, what separates. Yeah, what was it? It was Javier Iniesta who said like, or maybe it was Pirlo who said like, football is played with the mind, not the feet, or something yeah, it was like that. Pirlo. You know, Pirlo. Yeah. yeah. So it's, like yeah, it's, in, in terms of like form and performance and fitting into a system, yeah, you have to psychologically be willing, be malleable, and just you know, be willing to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was him. He said, "Football is played with the mind. Your feet are just the tools." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, oh. <laughs> Pirlo Pier also said the PS, the PlayStation was the greatest invention ever made. <laughs> <laughs> what? The PSV. He was the also saying play PlayStation an hour before the the kickoff for the World said, Cup. He said the PlayStation was the greatest thing ever invented. He said it's better than the wheel. I mean, it is a great invention. He, he said in 2006, uh, him in Italy, all he did all day was play PlayStation, like FIFA. <laughs> Dude, on your free time, you got to look up Kubo defending a corner for, like, New York City. He, he just stands there. Oh, it's great. It's so funny. It's so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, is I he still not... he's still coaching? No, he got sacked. He, he got sacked. I don't I don't, I don't know where he's I don't know where he's coaching now, but I know he got sacked from Juve. I must be he thinking of like in the Zaki or something. And Zaki's actually Inter's new coach. Yeah, really? I must be thinking about him. Um, I'm don't Italian. Have, don't Juventus have a Legri back? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. But that's shocking because a Legri usually performs with Juventus. <laughs> And how yeah. shocking they didn't try to keep Ronaldo. I'm kind of confused how they no. didn't even try Ronaldo want to go though. Yeah, I think if Ronaldo wants to go, you don't as a club you don't really have much of a choice. I think That's I think fair. Ronaldo Ronaldo would have Ronaldo would have stayed, but since Messi left that season, he's like, okay, well now it's my turn to go. Oh, that was Barca's biggest mistake, not selling Messi. Letting him go for free. That's true. They could have could have really they could have sold him for over a hundred million. Yeah, but then so they just let him go for free. Them for like like three hundred and cut their debt in half. Like yeah, man, for Man City, <laughs> Man City would have literally offered like two hundred or something. But they're like, yeah. you have to play pay for his release clause. Was just seven hundred. Like no, we'll just sign him extra. Making the same mistake by keeping Mbappe for an extra year and letting him go for free next year. No, they could have got like hundred eighty. No, because I think they have Messi. They want to play with but him. No, but dude, that's that's the thing. His she already have so much money somehow like it's unreal yeah they don't yeah, care they they had they, they they could sell their players like their whole team right now for like a bill a billion yeah. if they wanted to yeah yeah, yeah they could like, they have they, mbappe is like a speck of dust to them like he did they just want to win trophies yeah oh dude man i don't want to see you mbappe in madrid that'd be boring um hopefully he's not like a hazard oh man yeah. he fell off huh I want to see Hazard back at Chelsea. 
I do. No, I don't. I don't want more, Hazard. But I do. I don't, know. I don't want Hazard. Back Hazard go do the the Ben Arfa route and just go play, play for some shit prem team and just be the best. <laughs> well, Ben Arfa was nasty for Newcastle. Dude, he was yeah. so good. Really, really good. That's the thing, dude. I don't. I don't. Hazard. Because he, he came off when Chelsea won the Europa League. He's like, that's it, I'm done. And they went to Madrid, yeah. and he just – even – uh, pre, Right, preseason for Madrid, he, he was out of shape. Mm-hmm. Dude, I don't, he, he's done. I think his career is over. Yeah, I think he's fine. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think – no, he's still getting playing time at Madrid, so I think he could improve form, but – Right, but he's uh, never – I, I so think he – He'll he never get back to what he wants. No, no, no. no def- I don't think so. Well, without – if he ha- if he puts in a lot of work, then maybe. But but it's I just think not a hazard. In the prem, Salah has been better than Hazard. And their entire stay in the prem, Salah has been better because Hazard had a, a entire like a shit season. Yeah. When was the last time? When was the last time Salah had a bad game? Like yeah, but he's only been there for like three game. years. Salah's only been there for what three years? Four he's years. also the quickest Four. to a hundred prem goals, I think, too. Yeah. Oh, Mane, Mane needs three more goals and he gets 100 prem goals. Or one more goal, I think. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's Someone slow. just hit 150. I think Salah just hit 150 as well. No, it was Vardy. Vardy, yeah. But, the, dude, that's wow. the thing. Mane was signed before Salah. And Mane was at Southampton for, like, Yeah, two he years. also got some goals at Southampton as well. Yeah, right. he had a trick in two minutes. I remember, <laughs> that. I w- I remember watching that's that. Ridiculous. I remember. Yeah, that's good. Two minutes and 57 seconds. Mine got a hat trick. Do you guys remember? This is going to be so random. Do you remember that Yaya Torre goal against Arsenal that just went right into the top corner that just like bulleted? Do you remember that goal? Uh, I think no, I remember I the one so. against Sunderland where like the ball got played to him. And he just like finessed it top right corner. Oh, dude. Yaya Torre. That was like, that was a special. Yaya day. Torre was a different gravy. That season where he got like 16 goals, 9 assists. Dude, and was just different like, the most breed dominant in 2013. Very good. Bro, yeah. it's, it's crazy because like I haven't seen a player – like Yaya Torre since Yaya Torre. Yeah, he was such a, a he size. had such he had such a specific uh, play style that like you just can't replicate. Dude, he was so strong, and it, when he was running at you with the ball, you can't push him off it either. Like he was going through you. He was scary. He yeah, would have been scary nice. if Pep. If Pep, that's the thing, Pep hated him. Yeah, he didn't play much with Pep. <laughs> Yaya Torre's manager. As soon as Yaya Torre left, he said he he put a. A wit, uh, get a curse on him. They said an African, African, African curse. curse. An African, African curse, curse. right? Yeah. He'll never yeah. win the Champions League. Yeah. Oh well, that's putting into it. The curse is real as of right now because they were in the as final, right, but yeah, never won. He's never, they've never won the Champions League. Yeah. Do, do you think the curse slipped off to Tottenham as well, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just Harry Kane. Different. He's the next person that's got Harry it. Harry Kane's been poor this season, bro. Honestly, poor. this Harry Kane. Spurs with Harry Kane has been worse. Yeah, I think it said Rudiger had more touches in one game than Ooh. Harry has the whole year. Rudiger. Wait, say that again? I think, <laughs> I think I read something today that said Rudiger had more oh, touches. Okay, okay. <laughs> Man said Rudiger. <laughs> hey, Axel, you had some butchered pronunciations as well. Who would I say? Relax. No, you're, when you were naming the, like, the Italian teams, you are like, okay, Axel. Yeah, I forgot. Udinese? Yeah, I think it's Udinese. Udinese, yeah. My bad. All right, clown me next Udinese. time. Udinese. Okay, okay. Well, we'll, 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 clown, we'll clown you now. Norwich are getting relegated. They're no, <laughs> they are yeah. not. Norwich are no, no, All right, no, they played four top six clubs, basically, out of five games. Watford. Yeah, and, then they got, and then they got clapped by Watford. Okay, but it's just like they need one win under their belt or a draw or something, bro. Bro, they're not going to be anything. Their, their, their actual team sheet is like, okay. Like, I think I think they have the players to not get relegated. But, you know, once you once you get, once you you get start slipping as a relegated relegation battle team, it's kind of hard to – unless you're lost. Yeah, but I don't know. You know. They have no momentum yet because they've played such good teams. They, they're still building momentum after, I think, the Chelsea game. Bro, you guys are playing Everton next. You're going to lose. Okay. The, I said after yeah. the Chelsea game. I'm What's starting Dini and Peckford. Okay. Well, I mean, Norwich are gonna score and win that game. I'm confident. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, okay. Norwich has played a new team every single week because of their signings. They haven't had a stable like lineup once because they've right. signed new players every week. Right. So that means the team sucks. 
No, it means they haven't adjusted with all the new players yet. Ozan Kabak just had his first game against Watford. Brent, hasn't Brandon Williams actually played kind of well for Norwich? No, his first game <laughs> was tragic. Yes, yes, Brandon no, Williams no, is a great game. signing. He had that one game. Didn't he save it like clear? He, he had like goal line clearance, I saw. Yes, against Arsenal. Brandon Williams was crazy. Against Bro, Leicester, yeah. Brandon Williams lost us the game. Okay, honestly, <laughs> honestly, Arsenal, Norwich... Norwich should have won that game. <laughs> Arsenal got very lucky. I'm not going to lie. That was tragic. That The goal Arsenal scored was tragic. Arsenal sucked. Arsenal sucked. Arsenal sucked. Oh, and God. Tim Krul. Dimitri, Tim Krul has my respect now. Really? He has your respect again? <laughs> he has my respect. Dude, if you, you guys heard me at the start of the you season. Heard Axel at the Cromwell house was bad-mouthing Tim Krul like all morning. I, he had no him. respect of mine. Couldn't stand him at For two weeks. After, after <laughs> right now, Tim Krul has my respect. What changed? Yeah, Tim Krul gained like my well. respect when he saved about 44 penalties in the World Cup in 2014. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Tim Krul yeah. literally carried Netherlands. Bro, dude, I think the Netherlands would have gone through against Argentina if Tim Krul got subbed on. Yeah, I don't understand so why. Um, who dude, was Van Gaal? I don't know why no. Van Gaal wouldn't do that. You know, yeah. so had Messi didn't win that. Oh. Bro, seriously? Yeah. Silicon yeah. has never won a penalty shootout, and they decided in the World yeah. Cup semifinal, let me put Silicon in. Yeah, yes. and not do the tactic that really worked perfectly last game. You know, I mean, might as well try re- replicating it. Now? Dude, the team would have shit their pants if they were going up against Tim Krul. Yeah. yeah. Right. He covers so dude, much imagine, of the goal. Imagine the stadium and everything if Tim Krul saved the first penalty. Dude. It would have been all over. It would have been... It would have, yeah. Over it's mental, there. man. Penalties are all mental. It's, cr- yeah. it's crazy because... Back then, I wanted Germany to win the final, <laughs> but like now, I kind of wanted Argentina. Like looking back, like Argentina. Yeah, I wanted win. Germany to win then too, but it would have been nice for Messi to get a World Cup. Yeah. Right. Oh well, Higuain could have helped Messi, but he missed that one v one. True. was offsides. Yeah. That, that, no, it, it was, was offsides. It was not offsides, because the German defender headed it back. Hummels, I think, had a stinker, and then Higuain slipped through and missed. He also, he also scored in the final, I think, but he was offsides. Mm, I don't know. They didn't have VR back then, so it's less likely right. that that was true. That's true. Off I top, hate VR. Sack it. I hate VAR. With a passion, it's VR ruined the football. I, th- yeah, I think it can be. I think it had the whole implementation has to change. I think it, it can work, but they really have to. It's consistency. Out. Yeah, they really have to hammer out the consistency. Like the new offside rule they made, I like that now. I it's that. it's really like better. It's a lot better. A lot better. Because Ronaldo, like well, his arm was offside. But like they didn't call it offside, you know. Yeah, yeah. last year that would have been offside. That would have been horrible. Yeah, that would. Yeah, I that's, think that's actually yeah. I think keep VAR out of leagues, but put keep it in Champions League and like national nationals. I think it should be in finals. No. Mm, well, maybe. it's got to be consistent. I think, well, but I think yeah, in Champions League, then, then keep it in Champions in League, final. Europa League, and then like World Cup Euros that stuff. I think that's when you should prem. keep VAR. I don't like it. Yeah, it's it's, part of it's the different. Game. I like it. But dude, that's that's the thing. I liked it back then with no VAR because if a ref fucked up, like that's just part of the soccer. Like just that's, that's yeah, just part that's of the true. game. It's like, like what are the refs getting paid you know? for now? I feel like getting fucked over yeah. by VAR hurts more than being fucked over than like a regular ref. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's because true. now when now when a te- because now when a team scores, it's like oh. Yeah, like, I don't I even I celebrate. Even celebrate. Dude, how about dude, you? I was celebrating. Why even celebrate? Right, dude. Back, dude, sure. back then, you would score and it'll be guaranteed goal. They wouldn't bring it back. Like if you score, nothing was better than like when you know you're offside and you scored. You're celebrating. I'm the fucking best, dude. I'm offside. I'm out right. Of here. Like right, and they could they couldn't do anything. I uh like I was watching the Leicester game. I celebrated twice when Leicester scored, and both of them were offsides. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just how it is. When Ronaldo got tackled the second time, I, I stood up and yelled, Pen! Oh, I was, yeah. 100%. <laughs> that was crazy. That's why I don't I don't know. All right. Well, I, th- I think I went through all my whole list. If anyone else has anything else to add. Um, I don't know. I'm getting ready for a game soon. I just want to end it with Norwich are beating Everton. Come back next week, and you will know that Norwich beats Everton. We'll come back next week. You guys are gonna lose like five zero. Oh, Two wait, zero. I want to. I want to. I want to make one final prediction. This is a little irrelevant, but I want to make one final prediction for this season. Hot take: Mourinho and Roma are gonna win Serie A. I think Mourinho is gonna. What win place are they Serie in? Uh, let me check. This year. They I don't are. Know. I think they just lost this weekend. Hey yo, the viewers! I got you. They're fourth. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
I have faith in Mourinho and, and Roma. I think Pellegrini is going to win Serie A player think, of the year. I think I think Napoli is going to win it win. this year. One two-minute topic. If Mourinho brings Roma to a Champions League final and wins it, he's the greatest manager of all time. I agree. Easily. Yeah, yeah that's all fair. Right. That's fair. We should, we should give our Premier League predictions for the weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, go through okay. every game. All right, yeah, I have them. Yeah, I have them here. So right, first perfect. game, okay. Chelsea City. Wait, Benny, you start it, then Ethan, then Demich, then me. Okay. All right, I'm on the ESPN app. I don't know if you guys have the same, but you just just read out the picture and then we'll make a prediction. I got yeah. Chelsea, Man City. All right, what do you think, Benny? I think the score is going to be Chelsea one, Manchester City two. <laughs> Ethan, I think it's one zero Chelsea. They're both. Scoring. I think it's going. Sure. I think I think it's going to be two one Chelsea. Um. Yeah. One zero Chelsea. Okay. Next. Oh, Ethan's up, right? No, you're up. All right, so I'll just read them, right? Okay. Yeah, just yeah. read yeah. them all out. Next just... is Man United versus Aston Villa. I think As or I think United are going to have an easy three nil victory. Who's up? Yeah, see? Ethan. You. Um. Uh. Yeah. Two one Villa. Villa, really? I mean, Villa, I, I, Villa, I, 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 Villa came off against Everton, winning three zero, and Leon Bailey was ridiculous. Oh, he was. I, he did play good. He, he got he, injured he, though. He's injured now. Man, assisted scored and fucked off. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he's injured. <laughs> I think Villa, Villa, I think, are a team to mess with. I think he's gonna be Villa dangerous. dangerous. Villa. Villa are dangerous, but I think it's gonna be um, United's gonna win three one. Um, yeah, I think you Villa are gonna score. United wins like four one. It's gonna be a one one game though. And then Ole just sails the boat. He's yeah, it's gonna be man. it's gonna be United leads all over again. Yeah. They're gonna score. I'm not gonna be Same with Newcastle. I think, I think it's gonna be two Ronaldo, one Bruno, whatever. Ole's Ole's gonna steer the boat again. Oh, let me ask you a question. Do you, think, do you think Ronaldo joining diminishes Bruno's like impact? No. No, it makes because, it better. Because, effective. No, Bruno just picks him out. No, because yeah, Target. right. Bruno, Bruno just picks him out. How about that pass, dude? Oh, that outside yeah. the foot. Wait, bro, against the young boys, against yeah. young boys, against yeah. West Ham, against yeah. Newcastle. I think Bruno all yeah. assisted freaking Ronaldo. Yeah. Next Another. Game. Oh, Arsenal Tottenham. Oh, yeah. No, go in order. Go in order. No, well, Benny, are we Benny, doing every game? No, Benny will read it out. Well, I gotta go, yeah, bro. We, we gotta do this quick. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll speed it up. Okay, Everton, all... Norwich. Oh, oh, oh. You can start it. I'll finish my regards. Okay, uh, I think Everton is going to win 2 0. I think 3 0, Everton. I think it's going to be 2 2. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we like that. I think Everton will lose and Norwich will win 2 0. <laughs> all right, he leads okay. West Ham. I think it's going to be a 0 0 tie. Leeds West Ham. I think Leeds will win 1 0. I think it's going to be West Ham winning 3 2. Yeah, I'm with Demetrius. 3 2. No, no, 3 1. 3 1. All right, fair enough. Leicester Burnley. I think I'm going to give Leicester a 3 0 win. I'm giving Burnley, I'm giving a 0 0 draw. I don't really? think I'm say, that's a fair. I'm going to say Leicester are going to win 1 0. Uh, dude, I'm saying Leicester's coming in with all the smoke, like 5-0. I said Burnley. It's Burnley. Axel, it's Bur- dude, it's Burnley. They play it's Burnley. Like 10 behind the box. They take come 10 on, in the Sean box. Come on, Dyke football here, Axel. Sean Dyke, Brexit okay. football. Okay, just come back to the podcast and we'll see. All right, yep. fair enough, fair enough. We got Watford, Only Newcastle. Only time will tell. Watford, Watford Newcastle. Newcastle, I think where my boy is, Mali Asar, is going to go off. We're going to win 2-0, Watford. <laughs> we? I- yeah. You're a Watford fan? <laughs> he and his Molly star. I think he's going to be 1-1. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I think he's going to be 1-1. Uh, I, I think, I, think I'm a, I have St. Maxim and I write him. I, you know, I'm a big fan, so I think Newcastle are going to win uh, 2-1. All righty. Axel? Um, who? Newcastle. Watford. Oh, Watford. Watford, Newcastle. 1-1. Uh, yeah. I'd give it 1-1. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Next, okay. we have Brentford, Liverpool. So, okay, 4-0, Liverpool. Um... I give it four two Liverpool. I've Antonio Brace. Give me the give me the underdog Brentford winning two one. I hope so. Me too. I hope so. So uh, I think it's I think Probably it's gonna be a draw two two. 
Wow, all right. Next, the second to last, Southampton Wolves. I think we're going to get a 1 1 draw. I think Wolves are going to win 3 0. This is Adama Triori's weekend. Man, to score a hat trick for me. He's, he's finally got his finishing in place. I think I think it's going to be a 1 1 draw. I think Southampton win 2 1. And finally, we have the North London Derby. Sorry, Arsenal's winning 3 1. Arsenal Spurs. Honestly, 2 2. I don't see it going anywhere. I think 2 2. I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give Spurs the win. It's going to be 2 0. I I'm reverse. I think Arsenal will win 2 0. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, there's one more Palace Brighton. Palace Brighton. Oh, Palace Brighton. Okay. I'll oh wait, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh shit. I think I'm gonna do Palace, two. Palace just won 3-0 against uh not just one, but two weeks ago one against Tottenham. Oh, I get all right, two one palace. I'm saying two zero Brighton. I'm gonna say one nil Brighton. I'm gonna throw it out there. Is it draw? I don't know, like one one. Okay. All right. Oh wait, hold on. No, no, we missed one prediction. Sorry. Uh, on Sunday, oh no, on Saturday, it's Hartford Athletic uh, versus Tampa Bay Rowdies. Oh, oh Hartford Athletic. Hartford Athletic. Let's go. Tampa, Tampa Hartford Bay Rowdies. Four nil. Four Tampa nil, Bay Rowdies are going to win. TikTok. Just, we're we're on TikTok. Scoring. Justin Hack and Daniel Barrera. Oh, okay. If anybody watches these, I need people to comment. If Norwich get relegated, I will do uh, like a dare or something this season. Well, they're getting relegated. They're getting twentieth. If bro. people watch, people if more Arsenal, people will hopefully uh, watch. Arsenal Anyone who win? comes across this, yeah, come, okay, okay, comment down play. below what, and then we'll talk about it next week if we get yeah. any comments. If I, Arsenal's dude, very actually, confident they won't get relegated, so I think you'll be willing to do uh some <laughs> some funny stuff. Actually, if, if by the end of if by the end of the prem season we have over ten k followers, and someone 10K. says, Jeez. and someone someone will suggest something for you if, no, if we get uh, over ten k followers. We don't need over 10k. All we need is like two. Yeah, you need like two comments, two good comments. If we're not asking two comments, dude, no, we can have five followers. No, no I see two all comments. Of you, hey, why don't all of you guys drop your predictions down below? Uh, oh, big go. man, big man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ethan. You, no one can comment on the videos. You have to turn off kids mode. Yeah, I have to do that. I'll do that. The first podcast oh, was better. Can't anyway. comment right now. No, no, on you, not on YouTube. This oh, was okay. fun, boys. Thanks for the invite. This was fun. Yeah, this was. Yeah, great. I mean, next next weekend after the fixtures, we'll talk. Well, I think Sunday if everyone's free, or Monday again, whenever. I'm free Sundays and Mondays usually, so those are good days for me. Sounds yep, good. facts. Sundays and Mondays, and then next time, if Nico can join, we'll get him. If everyone else is yeah. free. Wait, is this still in the podcast? Yeah, it's not. It's not over yet. Oh, oh okay. I don't know. I was just wondering. <laughs> I just, All I, right, Norwich 2 0. I'm heading out. Bye, everybody. Thank you for your time. Norwich right, 2 0. Okay. Good luck. Type in the game. comments. You guys. See ya. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good luck, Axel. Score, Hattie. I will. I'll come back, and that will be our talking point. Yeah. Midfield yeah. maestro. <laughs> see ya. All right. All right. See ya. All right. See ya, boys. See ya.